In his new Fox series The Orville, Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane finally gets to fully scratch an itch he's had for years, and one that he has frequently demonstrated in his animated shows. I'm talking, of course, about his obsession with and love for sci-fi and Star Trek in particular. While his animated series characters have time-traveled, recreated the Star Wars films, met the cast of Star Trek, and much more, along with the Orville McFarlane is now essentially making his own Star Trek in everything but name. For better or worse, the series premiere of the Orville, Old Wounds, quickly establishes a world that isn't just in homage to Star Trek, and more specifically Star Trek, the next generation but it's very clearly an attempt to mimic the feel and look of that show. While the Orville is a comedy, it is not a parody of Star Trek and it does not lean as heavily into the humor as some may expect from a McFarland project. Indeed, the show can be as earnest, in its way, as TNG itself. And in fact former Star Trek producer Brannon Braga is an executive producer on the Orville. David A. Goodman, who has written and or produced for Family Guy, Futurama, and Star Trek, Enterprise, is also an EP. The show is set 400 years in the future with McFarlane starring as Ed Mercer, an otherwise regular Joe-seeming guy who is given command of the exploratory vessel the Orville. He gets the job not due to some Captain Kirkian feat of bravery, but because the Planetary Union just needs bodies. The truth is, you're nobody's first choice for this job says a guest starring Victor Garber as Admiral Halsey. One reason Mercer hasn't gotten a command earlier is because he's kind of gone off the rails since he caught his wife cheating on him, with a blue alien, a year earlier. Adrian Palitsky co-stars as this ex, Kelly Grayson who winds up serving as the executive officer on the Orville because, well, because one of the main dramatic cruxes of the series will be a focus on the pair's broken relationship. It's interesting sitting down to watch this pilot episode, as there are maybe two jokes in the first five minutes, neither of which really land. By the time Mercer visits his old pal Gordon, Scott Grimes, in a holodeck-type place, there are a lot of Star Trek-type places in this show, the Orville does prove that it can find the right balance between humor and its setting. Gordon is sparring with a holographic ogre, but they take a break to talk with Mercer. The ogre turns out to be a chatty, friendly bro who is really psyched for Gordon that he has been offered the helmsman job on the Orville. And then Gordon just cuts the ogre's head off while AU wind display lights up. Poor ogre dot but that balance isn't struck very often in this first episode which seems more interested than anything else in recreating the feel of TNG circa 1990. Written by McFarlane and directed by Iron Man and the Jungle Book's John Favreau himself, the pilot is shot, lit, costumed, and designed to look and feel like it's set on another ship that was also flying around at the same time as Captain Picard, only we never saw it. Of the first two episodes I've viewed so far, there are shuttlecraft, tractor beams, replicators, and, of course, foreheads of the week aplenty. plenty. 
For fans of Star Trek, the result can be a kind of charming nostalgia trip. But certainly in the television landscape of 2017, where indeed a new Star Trek, Discovery, is also launching and doing its best to chart a new course that breaks that mold, the Orville can also feel quaint. Other members of the ship's crew include Peter Mick and his Borchus, a sort of Klingon type alien who hails from a single gendered species, Mark Jackson as Isaac, a robot who thinks humans are lesser life forms, J. Leah's navigator John Lamar, Penny Johnson Gerald, a Deep Space Nine vet herself, as Dr. Finn, and Halston Sage as the super strong. Super Young Security Officer Alara Kitan. Again, all familiar types. Not that there's anything wrong with that dot in the grand tradition of Star Trek, the Orville also asks questions about real-world issues through its storytelling, tackling the dangers of technology and animal cruelty in the first couple of episodes, with gender choice coming up in Episode 3. McFarlane and his team's approach in this regard tracks with the rest of the show in that it seems well-intentioned and yet somehow old-fashioned at the same time.